Hello children. Welcome to the class. Children, we have completed already a few lessons and poems from our syllabus. Right. So we have not started our textbook activity. Correct. So it is pending. So from today, we will learn the textbook activities, the grammar part from the lesson. Okay children, today we will learn the activity for lesson 1, the textbook activity for lesson 1. Which is the first lesson? The boy who drew cat. Right. So we will learn the grammar part from our first lesson. Okay. I want you to open page number. Children, I want you to open page number 15. So here they have given first main as reading. Reading main. So what they have given in first main? Read and answer. So choose the correct answer. First one. What work did Toya's family do? What was the Toya family uh, do? What did they do? They, uh, were they cooking or farming or fishing? Yes, it is farming. The first answer is farming. Mark for second one. Now, what did the temple priest teach Toya? Now, is it writing, drawing or karate? It is writing. Tick for first answer, first option. Okay. Now, next, at last, what they have given? Vocabulary mean. In that vocabulary mean, what they have given? Prefix. Right. What do you mean by prefix, children? What do you mean by prefix? Prefix, a group of words is, prefix is a group of letters, okay, added to the beginning of a word, which either changes the meaning of the word, it is added to, or adds to the meaning. Now what do you mean by prefix? Prefix is a group of letters, a group, see here, a group of letters. For example, in, it is a group of letters, right, I plus in. So it is a group of letters added to the beginning of a word, added to the beginning. Which word? Famous. When we add a group of letters to the beginning, to the beginning of a word, which either changes the meaning of the word. Okay? When we add a group of letters to the given word, either it changes the complete meaning of the word when it is added to or it will add extra meaning. Okay? Understood now? For example, see how the prefix will be prefix means prefix word. The first group of letters then the word which is equal to new word. When we add prefix to the given word, it, we will get the new word. Understood? For example, see in plus famous is equal to infamous. Then do you uh, know the meaning of infamous? So, infamous means the person is known to bad things. Okay? Famous means a person is known. A person is well known by his good work. Right. Infamous means a person is known for his bad things, doing bad things. Right. So here they have given same thing. See, a group of letters added to the beginning of the word. A group of letters added to the beginning of the word either changes the meaning of the word. Okay. It changes the meaning. When we add in to the famous, it completely changes the meaning of the word famous and we will get the new word infamous. Right, famous means a person is well known to doing, to do good things. Right, infamous means a person is known for doing bad things. Right, so here prefix has completely changed the meaning of the given word. And it has given us a new word. Okay, understood? So either changes the meaning of the word, it is added and or adds to the meaning or it will add extra meaning to the word. Understood? Okay now, example, see, in plus famous, in famous. Here, prefix is in. So we are using before the word. The word which is used before the word, a group of letters which is used before the word, then it is known as prefix. So here, in is prefix. When we add in to the famous, now we will get the new word, infamous. Understood children? Now the other examples are ir plus regular. Regular means normally we will be on time, regular. 
Now, when we add prefix ir, then it gives the new meaning that is irregular. It completely changes the meaning of the word, given word regular. Right. Regular means punctual. Now, irregular means is not punctual. Right. Now, under plus water. See here, it adds to the meaning now. For this definition, we can relate this word. So, under is a prefix. Now, water is a word. So, we get the new word that is underwater. So, it adds to the meaning. It, is, it adds to the word. It adds a new word, water. And we add prefix under, then it becomes underwater. Okay. Now, re plus visit, revisit. So, revisit means again we are visiting it back. Okay. Again we are going. Right? We are visiting a place that is revisit. So, when we add re prefix to the word visit, then it gives new word that is revisit. It is adding to the meaning. It adds to the meaning. Right. Now, un plus important, unimportant. Miss plus understand, misunderstand. Understand means to know well. Now, misunderstand means when we uh, think about a person or when we understand a thing or a subject wrongly, wrong conception. Okay, that is misunderstand. Now, re plus use, reuse. Here it is adding to the meaning. Here it is completely changing the meaning of the word. Okay, re plus use, reuse. Re plus gain, regain. Gain means to get it. Okay. Now regain means to get it again back. Now un plus usual, unusual. Now ir plus relevant, irrelevant. Relevant means it is to the point. So what we are learning, it is to the point. When we say, when we add prefix ir, ir, then it completely changes the meaning. It gives the negative meaning. Okay. Irrelevant. This subject or this topic is not irrelevant. So when I go out of the subject, then it becomes irrelevant topic, right? When we are learning to the subject, to the topic, then it is relevant, okay? Now, un plus fortune, unfortunate or unfortunate, okay? So here I'll erase it, so here. Un plus fortune, unfortunate. Did you understand children prefix? The examples through the example? Yes. What do you mean by prefix? Prefix is a group of letters. A group of letters in L, under, re, un, miss. So, re, re, and un, ir. These are the group of letters. Okay. Added to the beginning of the word. Added to the beginning of the word. And of a word which either changes, it either, which either changes the meaning of the word. It either changes the meaning of the word, it is added to, when it is added to the given word or it adds to the meaning, like it adds to the meaning of the word. Okay, example, in, in plus famous, infamous, here in is prefix. Okay, now, ir plus regular, irregular. Under plus water, under water. We plus visit, we visit. Un plus important, unimportant. Miss plus understand, misunderstand. We plus use, we use. Re plus gain, we gain. Un plus usual, unusual. Ir plus relevant, irrelevant. Un plus fortune, unfortune. Did you understand children? Yes. Now, in the textbook, they have given an activity based on this prefix. Okay. Open page number 16. So, here, A. In A means, they have given, add a prefix to the word, given in bracket and fill in the blank. So, they have given the word in the bracket. So, we have to use, use, so we have to use prefix to the given word. Okay. Now, what is first one? He could not draw a flower. He was dash. The word is successful. What is the prefix we can use? Is it in successful or ir successful, under successful or unsuccessful? What is the prefix? Yes, it is unsuccessful. First one is un is the prefix. Un is the prefix. Now we have to write the 
give one word and with successful so un plus successful is unsuccessful so what will be the answer he could not draw a flower he was unsuccessful okay understood now second one i think that there has been a dash understanding what is the prefix uh, we have to use here for understanding it is miss 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 is prefix so when we use miss when we add miss to the given word that is understanding then it becomes misunderstanding okay now what is what will be the second answer i think that there has been a misunderstanding okay now third one what is third one my tv isn't working properly i will get it dash it is place what is the prefix we have to use is it in place or misplaced or is place or we place or unplaced it is the place the is the prefix and we have to write the given word replace okay i my tv isn't working properly i will get it replace means he will get the other tv okay fourth one the underground water is dash drinkable in most places so what we have to use which prefix we have to use it is undrinkable drinkable means which is uh, you which we can drink which is uh, we, uh, which we can consume okay undrinkable means which is not useful for drinking okay now fifth one now many animals live in dash ground burrows now they have given the word as ground so what the prefix should be many animals live in dash ground where they live underground okay under is the prefix under is the prefix to the given word ground now many animals live in underground and burrows okay the sixth one he was looking around for the book it must have been dash place here the boy has dash kept the book somewhere and now he is not getting the book now what the uh, prefix should be for the word place it is misplaced okay what the prefix should be it is misplaced misplaced means he has kept somewhere and now he is not getting it back okay now understood children the first answer he could not draw a flower he was unsuccessful now second one i think that there has been a misunderstanding third one my tv isn't working properly i will get it replaced the fourth the underground water is dash in most places it is undrinkable it is not suitable for drinking many animals live in dash burrows it is underground burrows now sixth one he was looking around for the book it must have been misplaced okay means he has kept somewhere and now he is not getting it back do you understand children yes okay now next is punctuation sorry next is pronunciation the same vowel sounds can have different sounds a long sound and a short sound so here vowels have long sounds and short sounds okay here they have given the examples you so see read the words in the table below and notice the difference in long and short vowel sounds here they have given the example for short and long vowel sounds vowels means how many vowels we have in english we have five vowels which are there which are the vowels a e i o u right these are the vowel sounds so in this vowel sounds we have in english language we have 21 vowels okay children so these vowels are divided into 
how they are divided yes we will see it now okay. children in english we have 21 vowels okay 21 vowel sounds we have so how vowels are uh, divided vowels are divided into short vowel long vowel and diphthong vowels so what do you mean by short vowel the word which gives very short sound that is known as vowel sounds okay short vowel sounds now a e i o u are vowels in english language right so by using these we can make it as short vowel long vowel and diphthong vowels okay now short vowels like apple egg interest owl and umbrella these are few examples i have given so short vowels in which the word we will not drag for long right we will not say apple it is apple egg no interest we will not say interest right so we will not drag the word so it is apple egg interest owl and umbrella we are not dragging the word right now what do you mean by long vowels long vowels means the word which has drag which gives long sound like yam yet palm pot okay now what do you mean by diphthong vowels diphthong vowel means two vowels make one sound okay diphthong vowels means two vowels make uh, one sound like a e a o okay these are diphthong vowels now examples knee heel peel you see here you can see the two vowels they make single sound and the children so in your textbook also they have given long and short vowel sound so c a e i o u are the vowel for each vowel they have given long sound and short sound sounding words right for long sound for long vowel what they have given example is gorilla and army so we are dragging a bit right now for short vowel sound apple paper we are not dragging right now for e for the letter e or the for the oval e the long sound is eel meat now for the short uh, sound is nest echo egg empty so these are the short vowel sounds now for i the long sound is kite ice the short is sit gym okay now o sound for long uh, sound it is coat bone okay now short is not want which like these are the for i sound it is which okay so o sound coat bone board road okay now short sound is not want got like this these are the short vowel sound now for u the long sound is u u yours okay now the short sound is bus young then next is um put okay cut these are the short vowel sounds children did you understand in vowels we have 21 vowels okay now in that the 21 vowels are divided into short vowels long vowels and diphthong vowels so short vowels means the words which are not dragged like apple egg interest owl umbrella and uh, see like this apple paper okay these are the words which give short sound now long vowels means which give long sound like a eat palm pot paper army okay these are the example for long vowel sound so this tongue vowels means the word it has two vowels and it gives one sound okay like meal heel feel meat okay so these are the diphthong vowels now the sound short sound which gives short word and long sound long vowels means which the words have been dragged and diphthong vowels means the two syllable or the two vowels make single sound okay understood children now next so here what they have given in next page in page number 17 they have given present participles okay now we will learn the present participle okay children okay 
Children here, next uh, grammar point, what they have given is present participle. Children, what do you mean by? Children, what do you mean by present participle? Present participle means when we want to talk or write about an action that is going on, it is formed by adding ing to the verb. So what they hear, what the definition is telling. So when we want to talk or write about an action, when we want to talk or write about an action which is taking place, which is going on by adding ing form, by adding ing to the verb is known as present participle. Understood children? So when we are want to, when we want to talk or to write about an action that is taking place, that is ongoing, that is taking place by adding ing to the verb is known as present participle. The other definition, the simplest definition is a form of a verb. The present participle is a form of a verb that ends in ing form, that ends in ing and comes after another verb to show continuous action. Now what this definition is telling? Same thing. The verb which adds ing to its uh, form to the word or to the verb when it uh, when it ends with ing and comes after another verb. So comes after another verb to show the continuous action. Right. So the verb ending with ing and comes after another verb to show the continuous action that is taking place is known as present participle. Do you understand children? So what do you mean by present participle? Present participle means a word or a verb which has, which ends with ing form and which want to tell us or which want to show us that the action is taking place, the action is continuously going with another verb, then that is known as present participle. Okay, so what do you mean by present participle? When we want an action, when we want an action to talk about or to, to write about which is going on by adding ing to the verb is known as present participle. Understood? Example, the children are watching television. What the children are doing? Yes, they are watching. What they are watching? Television. So here, watch is a verb. Right here, watch is a verb watching. So when we add ing to the verb watch then it becomes present participle. Here the word watching is showing that action is continuously taking place. Right. Now next example. I am working. So here work is a verb. Right. Work is a verb. When we add ing to the verb it shows this word working shows that action is taking place action is continuously going right children now what is third one they have been walking in the park now here walk is a verb right it is an action walk now when we add ing to the verb that is walk now this word walking tells that the action is continuously taking place they are still walking in the Park. Did you understand children what do you mean by, by present participle? So in a simple form we can say when a verb ends with ing then it becomes present participle which shows the continuous action. Right. So the present participle means the verb which ends with ing form and shows the action is continuously taking place then it is known as present participle. And that's the children. Now the rules for uh, writing present participle. We have few rules. These rules are very important. And before that, uh, can you give some examples for present participle? Verb plus ing. Yes, now for example, chatting, laughing, playing, jumping, reading. Okay, these are few examples. Okay, for the present participle, verb plus ing form is known as present participle. And before uh, going to the sentence, so we have some rules. We have to follow rules when we are uh, uh, when we are converting a verb to the 
present participle. So when we are adding ing to the word, so we have certain rules. So what is that rule? The so first rule. What does first rule tell? The so first rule says that when a verb ends in a silent e, the e is dropped before adding ing. Now here, what do you mean by silent e? Silent e means the e, the letter e is not pronounced in the word. Okay. So example, close. Here we will not use e. C l o s is close. So here. E is silent in the word close, right? When we use the word word ing or when we add ing to the word close, then here e is silent here, right? So e is dropped, and we will write only c l o s i n g here. E is dropped. We will not write e. Okay, understood? What does first rule tells us? First rule tells us that when a verb ends in a silent e. When a word is not spelled e in the word, then the e is dropped. The e we will not consider e when we are writing or when we are adding ing. For example, see close plus ing closing here e is dropped. Now next believe. Now if we write b e l i e v, that is also believe. Okay. So when we add uh, here e is silent. So when we add ing to the word believe, then here e is dropped. Then we will write it as b e l i e v i n g believing. Right now, next example care plus ing caring. Right here care. Here e is dropped, and when we are using ing, so here caring. So we will not use e. Instead of that, we will drop e, and only we will write ing. Understood, children? First rule tells us when a verb ends in a silent e, when the word e is silent in a word, then e is dropped when we are adding ing. Okay? Close plus ing, closing. Believe plus ing, believing. And care plus ing, caring. Do you understand first rule, children? Now, what the second rule tells us? So here also they have given. One example: leave, L E A V, leave plus I N G. Here E is silent, so we will drop E here and we will write it as L E A V I N G. Okay, leaving. The so second rule. What the second rule tells us? Second rule says that when a verb ends in an E, which is not silent, the E is not dropped before adding I N G. Did you understand? So when a verb ends in an e, which is not silent, the e is not dropped before adding ing. Here, what this rule is telling? So this second rule is telling that when a verb, when a verb ends with letter e, and that e letter e is not silent, then we will consider the letter e. Now the letter e is not dropped. And with along with the letter e, we will use ing form. Okay, for example, see v plus ing being v plus ing being. So here v is we consider e here. So e is not silent in the verb v. So v and when we add ing, then we here we are not dropping e and con we will continue. We will add ing. So being. And next, C plus E, so C plus I N G, seeing. So here we are not dropping the letter E. Here E is not silent, right? So E plus I N G, seeing. We can uh, <coughs> look into other words like D Y E, die, means coloring. Die plus I N G, dying. So D Y E, die means to uh, color. Okay, coloring the clothes or. Some people they'll color, they will color their hair, right? So that is uh, D Y E D I plus I N G example. See D Y E plus I N G. Here D I means to color, coloring. Okay, D Y E D I plus I N G. Here E is not silent. So when we add I N G, the E will remain same. And what the word we will get? D Y E I N G, dying. Here E is not silent, and we will consider E 
the word and we will add ing to it did you understand the first rule tells us that when a verb sorry in a verb when the letter e is silent we have to drop the letter e when before adding ing right so example close plus ing here e is silent so we have dropped e and we added ing closing so believe here e is silent and when we add ing then we will drop e and we will use only ing b e l i e v i n g understood same way here in the second rule so when a verb ends with e and that e is considered and that e is not silent so when we add ing to it then we should not drop the letter e so we have to consider the letter e for example b plus ing being so here e is not silent okay and when we add ing same way we will write it as the word same verb same and we will add ing to it okay now c plus ing seeing d y e die plus ing dying did you understand children first and second rule now we'll move on to third rule so what the third rule says us the third, third rule tells us that when a verb ends in i e when a verb ends in i e the i e is changed to y before adding ing so when a verb ends in i e so when a verb ends with the letter i e then when we are adding ing before converting into a new word so here we have to emit or we have to drop this i e instead of this i e we have to write y instead of i e we have to write y before adding ing you understand children when a verb ends in i e the i e is changed the i is changed to y before adding ing example die plus ing dying here die means to die to lose his life die 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 plus ing here the new word is framed so we have emitted di emitted means we have left this ie and we have added we have changed ie to y hey d y i n g okay now next l i e lie plus i n g lying l y i n g so here we have emitted i e right the next t i e tie plus i n g t y i n g tying and here we have emitted i e right so t i e tie here i e is removed or it is changed to y before adding i n g you don't understand children third rule tells us that when a verb ends in i e when a verb ends in i e so the i e is changed the i e is changed to y the i e is changed to y before adding i n g okay first rule tells us that when the verb ends with e and when the letter e is silent before adding ing we have to drop the letter e we should not write e when it is silent okay for example close plus ing closing believe plus ing believing care plus ing caring leave plus ing leaving the second law what the second law tells us second law tells us that when a verb ends in an e and e is not silent so we will not drop the letter e before adding ing so here e is also considered example b e plus ing being c e plus ing seeing g y e die plus ing is dying so then why i am telling you repeatedly means this is very important this is very important for you to write the word right so what the third rule tells us third rule tells us that when a verb ends in ie when a verb ends in ie the ie is changed to y before adding ing so here example d ie die plus ing is 
dy ing dying l i l i plus i n g l y i n g lying t i i t i plus i n g is equal to t y i n g okay these are three rules and we have the last rule now we will look into it so children we have learned the three rules right what is first rule first rule tells us that when a verb ends with i e and above sorry and above ends with e and the letter e is silent we have to drop the letter e and we have to use what we have to use we have to use ing so okay now second rule tells us that when a verb ends with e and the letter e is not silent we have to not drop the letter e correct now the third rule tells us that when a verb ends with the verb ends with ie and the ie is changed to y before adding ing right now fourth rule what does fourth rule tells us fourth rule tells us that when a verb ends in y so ing is added to it here we will not change anything just we will add ing to it okay so in third uh, law or in the third rule we we learned that when the letter or the when the verb ends with ie we have to drop ie or we have to change ie and we have to write it as y in fourth rule when the verb ends in y and here before adding ing here nothing no uh, word is changing or the no letter is changing we have to add ing to the given word okay see for example fly plus ing flying here f l y fly f l y fly plus ing ing here we have not changed anything the word remains the same as when we add ing right so fly plus ing flying play plus ing playing annoy plus ing annoying and i mean angry don't make me angry annoy angry or upset now cry plus ing crying here we are not changing any letter right apply plus ing applying did you understand children the rule when we are writing past power or the present participle so we have to keep in mind the rule okay what we have learned right now here they have given the exercise now a what they are telling here use the present participle of the verb given in brackets to fill in the blanks one has been done for you now here they have given exercise based on the present participle right so here they have given the verb in the bracket so we have to convert into present participle now first one is the children are dash play a game so what is the present participle what do you mean by present participle the present participle means a verb the ends with ing okay which tells us that the action is continuously taking place right that is known as present participle so here play is a verb so we have to convert into uh, present participle uh, by adding ing now what is first one the children are playing here play is a verb now we have added ing now it became playing now this is present participle of the verb play okay now second one some students are dash to the music dance is a verb now what will be the present participle it is dancing d a n c i n g c a n here dance in the word dance c is silent right in the word dance c is silent so we have dropped the letter e and we have used ing which rule is this it is first rule we have applied first rule here correct now third one the teachers are dash songs singing now what will be the present participle singing s i n 
G I N G singing. Now the boy who got hurt is dash. Cry is the word. Now what will be the present participle? Crying. C R Y I N G crying. Here children, which law we have used? We have used the fourth law. Right, fourth rule. Here we have not changed anything. Cry plus ing, crying. Right, fourth uh, rule says that when a verb ends in y, when a verb cry ends in y, we can add ing to it. Right, we have added ing. Correct. Now fifth one. What is this one? Some of the students are dash on the grass. Life is a verb. Now what we have to write? Present participle for lie. Just lying. What is the spelling? L-I-E-I-N-G or L-Y-I-N-G? It is L-Y-I-N-G. Now children here which rule we have used? Here we have used the third rule. Correct. L-I-E. This children here. L-I-E is the verb. Lie. So here we have changed the letter I E to the letter Y. Right? L Y I N G lying. Here which rule we have used? We have used the third rule. Did you understand, children? Yes. Now sixth one. Now sixth one. What does sixth one tell? Everyone is dash. The picnic enjoy. Here what is the present participle for enjoy? Enjoying. E N J O Y I N G. Here, fourth law is applied, or the fourth rule is applied. So, the, when the letter is in, in, uh, ends with Y, we have not changed anything, we have just added I N G. Correct? Now, did you understand children present participle? Yes, I hope you have understood. Now, we will move on to our next name. Open page number 18, children. Children, next topic is gerund. Now, what do you mean by gerund? Gerund means it is a verb. Gerund is a verb which is used as a noun. So, here gerund is a verb which is used as noun. Here, the verb acts as noun. So, now what do you mean by noun, children? Noun is the name of a place, person, animals and things are known as nouns. Right? So, here the verb will act as a noun. So, in other words, how we can say, how we can define gerund? So, ing form of a verb that functions as same as noun. So, when the verb ing, so when the verb with ing form, when it acts same as noun, so that is known as gerund. Did you understand children? The verb the action word, verb is action word, right? So, the verb which acts as a noun. So, it is known as gerund. For example, we, I enjoy cycling. Riding is fun. Watching TV is my favorite pastime. So, here cycling is acting as a noun. Okay? So, this sentence is gerund. So, here the verb Cycle. Cycling is a verb. Right. Cycling means to cycle. So, cycling is a verb. So, when it acts as a noun, that sentence is known as gerund. Okay. Now, here second. Riding is fun. What is fun? Riding. Riding is verb. So, when it is added with ing and acts as a noun, that is known as gerund. Okay. So, watching TV is my favorite past time. Here, watch is a verb. So, here, ing form, watching. Okay, so, watching is, t watching TV is my favorite past time. Here, watching is functioning same as noun. So, it is gerund. Did you understand? The verb with ing form, which is used as noun or which acts, which functions same as noun is known as gerund. Okay, now the other few examples are getting up early is a good habit. Now here, getting is functioning or acting same as noun. Okay, getting up early is a good habit. 
Okay, so get this sentence is jaran. Here uh, getting is jaran. Okay, now fishing. Fishing is my hobby. Your fishing is behaving or acting like a noun or functioning same as noun. Now next, Asifa is fond of dancing. Here dancing is a noun. So here the verb with ing form is acting or functioning same as noun. Okay, so it is gerund. Now last uh, in the last topic we have learned that verb with ing form is known as present participle, right? So when we use ing to the verb or an adjective to the verb or an adjective, then it is known as present participle. We have learned in the previous topic. So here also gerund also is having ing form. So don't get confusion, children. Present participle is here. The verb with ing form. Just the verb with ing form is present participle. Okay, the verb with ing form, okay, is known as present participle. But whereas in gerund, the verb with ing form functions same as noun. Okay, in gerund, the verb with ing form, the verb cycle with ing form, ing cycling, with same functions same as noun is known as gerund. Whereas in present participle, the verb, only the verb with ing form is known as present participle, right? Uh, for example, Alexander is writing, Madhvi is reading a book. Now, don't waste time by playing computer games. These are just the verb with ing form, right? But here in these examples, here the verb with ing form are functioning same as noun. So this is known as gerund. Did you understand children? Yes. Now we'll move on to the exercise. Children, now we'll move on to the exercise. So what they have given in the exercise? Before that, we'll read the definitions, okay? We read these sentences. Riding was Alexander's favorite pastime. We are like getting up early. Asifa is fond of dancing. So the words riding, getting and dancing in these sentences are gerund. Now what do you mean by gerund? Gerund is a verb which is used as noun. So if for each of the above sentence you ask a question starting with what you will get. Okay, what you will get? The ing word. Riding, getting, dancing as answers. So that is known as gerund. So here they have given the simplest form. When we ask a question with what, okay, when we ask a question with what, the answers, the answers will be in ing words. So when the answers will be in ing words, then that sentences or the that words are known as gerund. Okay, now ask yourself, what was Alexander's favorite pastime? What was Alexander's favorite pastime? Riding. So that is gerund. So what does Ria like? What does she like? She likes getting up early. Now what is Asifa fond of? Asifa is fond of dancing. So when we ask a question with what and when we get answers with ing words, okay, then that is known as gerund. Okay, now here the examples that you can see. When we use a verb ending in ing as a noun, it is a gerund. Example writing is fun. So what is fun? Writing. See, did you understand? See, example, see. Writing is. Here, yeah, writing is fun. So when we ask a question with what? And we ask a question with what? Then what is fun? What is fun? So riding. So when we get answer, when we get answer with ing form, when we get answer with ing form, then it is known as gerund. Did you understand children? Yes. Now when we use a verb ending in ing as a verb or an adjective, it is present participle. In present participle, we will not ask question as what. Okay. So when we use a verb, just we will use a verb 
with ing form to the verb or an adjective then it is known as present participle now for example alexander is writing sorry alexander is riding now see here also alexander is riding so can we ask what is riding no so here we have to ask it as who who is riding so this is not a gerund right gerund means this is so gerund means when we ask a question what and the answer which we get if it will be in ing form then it is known as gerund riding is fun what is fun riding is fun watching tv is my favorite hobby now what is your favorite hobby watching tv right we have got the question what and the answer is watch verb plus ing right plus ing then it is known as gerund but in present participle ing will be there but the question will not be as what we we can't ask a question right here can we ask what is riding we can't ask so it is present participle do you understand the uh, simplest form how to uh, differentiate between gerund and present participle gerund when we ask a question with what and the answers which we get through ing form then that sentence or the that word is known as gerund whereas in present participle we can't ask question with what right so did you understand now we will continue our exercise d first one here yeah, underline the gerunds in these sentences one has been done for you now here they have given sentences so in that we have to underline the gerunds okay now my cat's favorite activity is sleeping here sleeping is gerund so how they have uh, differentiated between present participle and uh, gerund so they ask uh, we can ask question Did you understand the difference between present participle and gerund? So here they have given an activity. So we will complete that. So what they have given? B means underline the gerunds in these sentences. One has been done for you. So here they have given few sentences. In those sentences we have to underline the gerunds. So now what do you mean by gerund? Gerund means when the word or the when the verb. with ing form functions as a noun is known as gerund right or the other definition the simplest definition is when we ask a question with what and then the answers will be in ing form then that word is known as gerund right so here they have given sentences so we will underline the gerund now first one they have they have already done the first one what is first uh, sentence my cat's favorite activity is sleeping now how can we say that sleeping is a gerund so when we ask a question what is my cat's favorite activity so what is my cat's favorite activity sleeping so sleeping sleeping is gerund now second one my children sorry the children practiced walking with a book balanced on their head what did children practice they practiced walking so walking walking is a gerund right now third one what is third one we will also be meeting my younger brother who lives in bangalore now who or what will be doing when we go to bangalore we will also be meeting so we will meet so meeting
Meeting is a jaran, right? So we try finishing your work in time so you can come with us. What we have to do? We have to try finishing. So finishing. So finishing is a jaran. Now my mother enjoys listening to classical music. What does my mother enjoy? She enjoys listening. So here. Listening is a gerund. Now sixth one. My sister is good at playing basketball. What is my good sister good at? Playing. Then what the words I am doing you have to underline in your textbook. Okay. The seventh one. We postpone making any decisions in the meeting. So what did we postpone? We postpone meeting, right? So what did we postpone? We postpone meeting. Now eight one. Now do you recall seeing someone like that? What do you recall seeing? Ninth. I am afraid of performing on the stage. What I am afraid of? I am afraid of performing. I am afraid of performing on the stage. Now, he insisted on us watching the TV show. What did he insist on? So, he insisted on watching. So he insisted on watching the TV show. So did you understand children? How can we find the gerund in the sentence? Yes, by, by asking the question what and the answer should be in ing form. Then that word is known as gerund. Children, I hope you have understood the textbook activities. What we have done or what we have learnt from the lesson 1. So next class we will uh, learn the activity from the second lesson. Thank you children.